This is a simple pathfinder problem. Answer may look difficult, but the problem is easy. This is a water sprinkler. It is throwing out water through a jet. These are jets at two locations. I am taking distances. Let this be A. I think in the book it may be L. So just don't get disturbed by the dimensions. Concepts I am discussing. So this is A. And this is given some small length, say B which is negligible, P is very, very small as compared to A. So for all practical purpose, I am assuming that water is being emitted through these locations itself. These lengths are very small. I am ignoring them. The relative velocity of water to the this nozzle is U. And the cross-section area of nozzle, say, is A. A density water of water is Rho. So small element of mass which comes out in time dt from the nozzle will have uh, how much value we know that dm upon dt in case of fluid flow is rho a v v is the velocity with respect to nozzle here it will be z so just remember this formula i'm not deriving it standard formula dm upon dt is rho a u this is the rate at which water is coming out from nozzle. And this is always the velocity with respect to nozzle, relative velocity. So here the water is maybe being pumped through some system. And because of that rate of flow which is coming into the system, water is coming out with velocity u. And it will remain coming out with velocity u with respect to nozzle. And even, even when this sprinkler is, will be rotating, don't get confused that you will change. This is already given relative and it is dependent on how much water we are pumping that relationship in the area of the nozzle. So until that is changed, you will not change. What will change is the omega of the angular velocity of the whole system. If the whole system has moment of inertia i, it will start rotating. So one part we have to find is what is the initial acceleration that's very easy, angular acceleration that is very easy. I'm not doing it. I'm uh, finding the next part which says what is the omega in terms of time t, the function is a function of time. So let us say that it is at any location theta at a given point of time and from, uh, let us see that it has moved a small angle d theta. Oh, let me move in this direction. So, sorry for that. So it is moved in this direction. It is rotating clockwise. So it will move in this. This is a small angle d theta. It is appearing to be exaggerated. So anyway. So at this point, suppose it was having angular velocity omega. And at next point, so at time t. And this is t plus delta t. The moment of inertia of the system doesn't change because water is coming in and water is going out. Moment of inertia is of the system, of the water, that much of water which is contained in the system. So don't get confused with rocket thing. Moment of inertia of the system is not changing because water is continuously being pumped in. It is not, quantity of water is not reducing inside the system. Let this omega be omega plus delta omega at time t plus delta t. When it was here, some water was already thrown out, so forget that. Now, during this time, during this time dt, say the water which has come out is delta m. Delta m is the amount of water which is thrown out from both the sides. So what is the angular velocity, angular momentum at time t and time t plus delta t? So L at time t is equal to, forget water which has already come out. Just don't get confused with that. That is already thrown out. So at time t I am looking at the position and we have to look at the water which comes out during time this dt. So at time t I am just looking at the momentum which was there of this rod. There was some momentum of the water which has already come out. So that we have to see when we see the time before that. So I am starting from this time. I am repeating it. So the angular momentum of the system is I omega. 
what is the angular momentum at t plus delta t at t plus delta t the angular velocity is omega plus delta omega so it is i omega plus delta omega plus there is one more part which is the water which has come out now water has come out with relative velocity u and its velocity in absolute in the fixed frame you have to see its angular momentum about this vertical axis in the fixed frame so you, you have to know what is the velocity of this small amount of water which has come out so let us look back again at the system part of the system i'm drawing this is the velocity u and here you have the velocity of this tip is a times omega plus delta omega so what you have is the velocity of water in the fixed frame in this direction would be a omega plus delta omega minus u is the velocity of this portion of water from this rotational axis perpendicular to the line joining the rotational axis in the fixed frame so what is the angular momentum of water at this t plus delta t of the small amount of water which has come out you have to keep in mind it is at two sides so don't forget multiplying by two twice the mass into the velocity which is a omega plus delta omega minus u into don't forget multiplying by the distance a of both the sides so i've already taken two so it is twice m a square omega plus twice m a square delta omega minus twice m u a is the angular momentum of this part which you have to add here so let me equate because there is no external force in this acting on the system whatever water is being pumped here it is also not creating any torque so there is no torque on the system so momentum is conserved so i omega is equal to i omega plus i delta omega plus twice m a square omega plus twice m a square delta omega minus twice m u a it is actually uh, delta m sorry why i am writing m it is all delta m delta m u a s this is all delta m actually now this small delta m and delta u whenever there is such situation where two deltas are multiplied so this is tending to zero this gets cancelled so i have equation i delta omega plus twice delta omega delta m a square omega minus twice delta m u a just take just interchange it or just equate it so i delta omega is equal to twice m u a minus a square omega or you take a common here so twice a here and this goes out so it is i delta omega upon u minus omega a omega is equal to twice m a so this is delta m unnecessarily i am always missing delta so small mistake this is delta m actually not m just divide by delta t so i delta omega upon delta t u minus omega a is equal to twice delta m upon delta t into a delta t tending to zero so all will be dm upon dt and d omega upon dt there it is i d omega upon dt now you can solve it u minus omega a is equal to twice dm upon dt is what dm upon dt was rho a and u so it is twice rho a 
u into a this is what is coming here and when you integrate it so it will be the answer should be it will be i upon minus a it will be ln u minus omega a limit from 0 to omega final is equal to twice rho a u a into t limit 0 to t so it is uh, i ln u minus omega final it is u actually minus omega final to a upon u is equal to minus 2 rho a u a square into t so it comes to u minus omega final into a upon u is e raised to power minus twice rho a u a square upon i into t so omega final comes as u upon a 1 minus e raised to power minus twice rho a u a square upon i into t that is the answer